Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining me. Today I will be reading chapters 44 through 46 from our One District, One Book. Chapter 44, Joe. Apparently all that stuff about giant blood-sucking leeches climbing up your nose got to Emily and she barfed up her breakfast. Kids are running around screaming, Dylan is laughing, Emily is bawling, and Mrs. B is calling the office to tell them to send the custodian down to room 506 quick with a mop. I feel bad for Robbie. He was having such a good time up there telling his story, and now all anyone can think about is Emily's bark. Miss Frost was right. It must be really hard coming all the way from India to New Jersey, especially when you have to deal with somebody calling you names and stealing your mechanical pencils. Not to mention, hitting you on purpose with a softball. I look at that beautiful blue double peanut M&M sitting in the bowl in front of me and whoop, zoop, sloop. All of a sudden, I get this great idea. Chapter 45, Robbie. The smell of the vomit is overpowering. Girls are screaming, Emily Mooney is crying, and Dylan Samreen is laughing his head off. Mrs. Bean tells me to return to my seat then she asks us to take out our copies of Bud, Not Buddy. We'll go to the library and read until the custodian has had a chance to clean up. When we return, we can continue with our game. Poor curry head, says Dylan, as I take my seat. His speech was so bad, the audience puked. I ignore him and pull out my copy of Bud, Not Buddy. That's when I notice a folded up scrap of paper lying on the desk beside the jar of leeches. I unfold it and read. Beware, do not touch the jar. Trust me, Joe. It has been a day full of surprises and it seems there will be one more. Chapter 46, Joe. As we line up and start down the hall toward the library, my stomach is in a knot. Can I really pull this off? Dylan Samreem is up ahead, sticking his tongue out at Lucy Mulligan while she ignores him. Robbie hasn't said anything to me. But I know he read the note. I saw him. I hope I'm right about Dylan. But the closer we get to the library, the more I wonder if I was crazy to think that my plan could work. And then it happens. The first domino falls. Oops, I forgot my book, Dylan tells Mrs. Bean. I'll be right back. Here goes, I think this is it. As I turn and watch Dylan walk down the hall, I think about all the mean things he's done. Not just to me, but to Robbie. Zebras have to stick together. I want Robbie to feel the way I felt when I saw that double M&M sitting in the bowl. As I watch Dylan Samreem duck into room 506, all I can do is hope that after all these years, I know him as well as I think I do. I cross my fingers and begin the final countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one. No! The door bangs open and Dylan comes flying out of room 506 like a bat out of you know where. There's a terrified look on his face and a big wet stain spreading across the front of his pants. I can't believe it, it actually worked. When I saw Dylan eyeballing those leeches earlier, I knew it was only a matter of time before he'd try to swipe them. And then, like everything else he's taken, I also knew where they would end up. Dylan is jumping up and down now, swatting at the front of his pants until finally the glass jar falls out the bottom of one of his pant legs and rolls across the floor. Talk about an epic sequence. Well, thanks so much for reading with me today. I can't wait to see what happens next with Robbie and Joe.